Hi, welcome to part two of the Nete web development framework tutorial where we're creating the podcast collective web application. And this is kind of where we left off here. We're, uh, we're just, we've got our, we've got our landing page um, and we have a collection. And now we're going to begin to add authentication functionality to the site using the authenticator component in, in Nete. And, um, and yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be good. We're gonna do basic authentication. We're just gonna you know do you do you have access to the site or don't you at this point? And in the the part part three, we'll begin looking at uh, roles and you know individual uh, uh, session based authentication to a particular portions of the site. But we'll just start with basic authentication for now. One thing I do want to fix before we get too much further along here is I, I really want to fix these card heights. So if you'll go with me to the Podcast Collective folder, and I'm using Visual Studio Code, as you may remember, and um, under uh, www uh, subfolder CSS, our style.css uh, needs, a, needs a new new line here to give our card some styling to control that height. And so I'm just going to pop that in here. And so the card height will be 100%. That'll just make it easy. Uh, we'll save that one. Go back to podcastcollective.test. I have to do a control F5 to reset my CSS files. And there we go, I like that a lot better. All right. So the first thing we need to do um, to create this authentication functionality in our site is create a new uh, table in our database. And I'm using XAMPP as you may remember. And um, if I just go to localhost, it, it drives me right here to dashboard. And I'm going to go to PHP admin to create a new table. And I'm going to log in. And I've created, uh, for, a, for this particular uh, tutorial, I've created a, a database called Podcast Collective. And I've already created the new table for users, and I'll show you what that looks like. I'll be putting all these modified files in this new uh, user tables.sql uh, file so you can you know do this easily on your if you're following along uh, on my uh, github repository so it'll, it'll be there if you don't want to create it by hand here but the structure is pretty simple uh, for this table basically I just need uh, an ID column it will be auto incremented and it'll be our it'll be our primary key and a username a var of 255 and a password field uh, for uh, 500 and, and another bar char. All right, so that's pretty simple. Once you've completed that, we're ready to start creating our new model in in our podcast collective models folder. So we're back here, Visual Studio Code Podcast Collective under models. We're creating this new uh, model called Podcast Authenticator.php. And this is a, a little bit more involved than the then the model we created for uh, podcasts, and you remember that podcast facade is the model that we created for our podcast. It's pretty simple. Basically, we're saying, hey, just give me a data object that is a representation of the table for podcasts. In Podcast Authenticator, things get a little bit more complicated because we want to create an object uh, which Nete refers to as an identity object, and that requires both um, uh, in using the data, the, the table for users, and using the functionality or the, the methods that are available to you, to us, and the classes available to, to us in Nete security. So we'll, we'll be walking through this. Just by way of reference, you should know that this is basically a cut and paste of the, um, the, the documentation on Nete's website. And it can be found here. Let me go, let me go back to Nete here just to show you where everything is. Um, you'll find the documentation pretty complete, pretty helpful. Um, the, the purpose of the to this tutorial is basically to, to tie everything together. Sometimes, it, you know, documentation isn't always a tutorial. You know, it's just giving you one piece at a time. And I just want to make sure it made sense as a as a whole thing. So, so anyway, here's what the, uh, the authenticating users uh, documentation you know looks like, and you'll find the the an example model here for authenticator right here. And so I'll be walking you through you know, as, as best I can what's going on in this in this class that we're creating. All right. So the easiest way for me to do that, rather than going through the one they have, let's go to the one that, that I've created that, that connects correctly to our podcast uh, application. So go back with me to Visual Studio Code. And again, here we are in the podcast authenticator file here. 
Um, so basically, you know, app, it's, it's a model. We're creating that namespace. Um, we're going to use the framework, and we're going to use uh, a, a new class called Simple Identity from the Nete Security folder. Um, we're, creating, we're creating a class called Podcast Authenticator, and it implements uh, the Authenticator class. We're creating two properties here, private properties, database and password, because we have two dependencies this time. Um, that, and we are using a constructor injection to declare our dependencies as a parameter of the constructor. We need a, an instance of Explorer for, our, for to be able to access our table users. And we need an instance of passwords to be able to kind of create this, this identity object that, uh, that also includes methods that, that, that affect the, the, uh, the user table. And it just makes life a little easier than creating those on our own. So we're going to uh, pass those values into these uh, these properties and, and using the this keyword so that we can use the, the these properties in our uh, methods within our within our class that we're creating podcast authenticator we're creating a function or a method called authenticate and it's it's going to rent it's going to deliver us a, a what's called a simple identity and basically we're looking for uh, a row in the database table users um, if, if we do have one it'll, it'll generate a row for us um, basically, we'll be filling in a form, and it will be looking for a, a user and a password in that that match in our table. And if it, if it doesn't get that row, if there, that username does not exist, then it's going to throw an exception. And this exception will deliver a, a message as a flash message. You may remember what those are uh, to our to our web application. If it, if it can't find the user, and if the password isn't right, it will say. It'll send a message as a, as a flash message saying invalid password. If it passes both the, uh, finds both the user and a, and a matching password, it will uh, create a new simple identity and we can begin, begin to use that identity object in our application. All right. In addition to that, in this, in this model, we're going to uh, create um, a function or a, or a method, create user, so that if uh, we're going to create a form, and we're going to, if it if it passes through the forms controls, in other words, if it gives a valid username and a and a, and a password, then it will create a user in the a new user in the user table. All right. So basically, everything you need to do to work with a, a an identity object is is created in this in this model for us. And uh, yeah, it works pre works pretty well, and it's pretty neat. Pretty pretty neat way to get started here in adding authentication to our podcast collective web application. Okay, I'm going to rest here for a moment and come back and we're going to create the uh, the presenter to render help us render the forms that we need and then create those the templates for those forms in the next section of part 2. All right. I almost forgot something very important. Um, we have to declare our uh, podcast authenticator as a service in services.neon. And you remember uh, that you'll find those configuration files, those .neon files in under the config folder in services.neon. You need to be sure to add this line so that things will work correctly. All right. All right, we're ready to begin creating our sign presenter.php. Uh, this folder will go under presenters. Or, I'm sorry, this file will go under the folder presenters. Um, this is very similar to the work that we did in creating the podcast presenter.php. Basically, we're creating the form components needed to help us render the forms for signing in, signing up, and signing out of the podcast collective web application. I'm going to go through this relatively quickly because, again, it's been kind of covering old ground here, but just because we're using a new model, I'll point out a couple of the differences. Obviously, we're using the, the Nete framework and um, and using many of the, the classes required for us to use to create forms. Um, we're going to be using Bootstrap forms so that we can render them correctly as Bootstrap 5 forms. Um, and of course, we're going to need an, an instance of our of our podcast authenticator that we created in the last section. So this class will be called Sign Presenter. It extends, uh, extends the base presenter in Nete. We're going to create a, a um, uh, property here called authenticator and we have a dependency on an instance of podcast authenticator we're creating that as a using the constructor our uh, injection method and we're passing our uh, dependency as a parameter of the constructor 
we're creating an instance of, a, of our podcast authenticator, which we're calling authenticator and using the this keyword so that we can use uh, this authenticator within the methods of our class. First method we're going to create is called create component sign in form and you, this is the probably looks very, very familiar. Um, we're creating the, the elements we need to, to uh, create a form component. Um, so it'll be a bootstrap form. Um, we're showing the elements that we need within our form. We need an email uh, uh, element and we need a password um, element and there's a both or password fields and email fields I should say and they're both required fields um, and if they're if they're not filled in they'll it'll render an error and asking you to please enter your email or please enter your password if you don't put them in okay in this particular case we're going to add a submit button to the form we're not going to be using the HTMX um, functionality within with this presenter at this time we may refactor it later if we decide that we want to use a something like a modal or something to um, to log to log into the, the site or to uh, to um, uh, sign up to the site, but we we will do that as on a later time just to just to keep it simple for now. If this form is submitted successfully, it'll move on to the sign in form succeeded method, which we'll create next. And the sign in form succeeded method takes the, the data from the form, and we're going to use a, a try and catch uh, uh, combination here. Just kind of we're kind of up in our OOP game here, so but uh, but just just to, just to get the flavor of the thing, we're going to um, get the data uh, for the for the user, and we'll see if uh, we'll see if the if the username and the password match. Um, if it works, if we get a user, then we'll redirect to the landing page. Welcome. If not, um, then we'll go back and and render uh, um, an error message that says incorrect username or password, and give our give our our user another chance to sign in. All right. Next, we're going to create a, create a method to create the component sign up form. So in this case, again, we're going to create a form component. Um, it'll have a, the email as a required field, and it will create an input field for password. And there actually be two of them. And we're using some functionality within the the, um, uh, the security component here so that we're going to verify the password. Um, and the two password uh, fields needs match. It won't let you pass in pass that new user in to the database unless they do match. And then once they once they do match, then they then they'll move, the the form will move on to sign up form succeeded. And again, here's that that method sign in form succeeded. It'll take that data. It'll create a new uh, using this instance of Authenticator, our instance of Authenticator. It'll use the create user um, method within that within that instance of Authenticator, and it'll put the push the data username and the data password into our into our user uh, table, and it will then create a flash message which says "Welcome, you're all signed up," on, and that will be rendered on the landing page. Welcome, and that will be the page we're redirected to. And finally, we're just creating a, a sign out function to you know, release you from being signed in. So that was, that was relatively simple. Just, it's just using our, using our uh, user, get user uh, uh, object here and, and log out or these met, these are the methods within our, uh, our authenticator and they'll pass on a flash message saying you've been signed out and it'll redirect us to the landing page, the, wel the, the welcome, uh, method within the landing page, landing page presenter. All right, so that was it's pretty quick. Um, but again, I think you know you've seen this before, and to some degree in the uh, podcast presenter, and uh, and uh, so it's relatively straightforward. But using some new functionality available to us through the Nete Authenticator uh, component. All right, so next part of this uh, this next section of this part two will be creating the forms templates for uh, for signing up, signing in, and signing out. All right. All right, we're ready to create the latte templates to render the forms to sign in and sign up to the Podcast Collective web application. We don't have to create a template for uh, signing out. We're simply calling a method from, from our uh, sign presenter when we're signing out. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like. But first, let's create these templates under presenters, and then under the folder templates, we're gonna create a new folder called sign, 
And we're going to create two new files under the in, in the sign folder. First, in.latte, and these are very very simple here. Um, in the, the in.latte template, we're going to you know, call for our layout, layout.latte. We're going to create some block content. Um, we're going to call it member sign in, and we're going to uh, call the the sign in form uh, form component from our uh, pres our sign present presenter uh, 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 class. So the next one will be up dot latte. Very similar. We're going to call this one. We're calling for the layout again. Layout dot latte. We're going to call it new user sign in, and, and of course this time we're calling for a different form component, the sign up form component within the sign presenter. All right. So once you've completed those two files, we have one file to to change here. Um, we want to control what we are able to see within the nav bar on our layout dot latte. So if you go to Layout.latte, we, we need to make this change. We need to include a conditional statement here based upon, <clears throat> depending upon what, whether a user is logged in or logged out, this is what they're going to see. If a user is logged in, then they'll have links to the uh, podcast table contents, that the, the podcast presenter and the table contents method. If not, oh, they'll also have a link, of course, to sign out, which we'll call the, uh, the sign presenter and the out, uh, the out method. And uh, if they are if if they are not logged in, um, they'll see links to either sign in or sign up on that page. So yeah, pretty pretty straightforward notion there. If they're logged in, they can see one uh, one set of links, and if they're logged out or if they're not logged in, they see another set of links. And let's see what that looks like on the on the website here or on the web application. Here we are in, in podcastcollective.test. Um, I am not signed in at this point. If I do sign in using one of my one of the users that are in the in the user table using test dot oh, tester at test dot com and with the with the uh, password one two three four five, we'll sign in and there we go. We're signed in. Our our links have changed now to my collection or sign out. And if I go to my collection, uh, we have the collection of, of uh, a podcast. Now, we haven't yet created a relationship between users and specific uh, podcast entries. Um, we'll be doing that in the next part of this tutorial. At this point, if you've you know created a lot of different users uh, into your site, um, everyone can see all, uh, all entries for podcasts, the entire table for podcasts. We likely want to change that. And add roles, and we're probably going to add one add at least an administrator role and an author role, so that you uh, can limit what you're viewing based upon your your um, your authorization to the site. And so we'll move from authentication, basic authentication, into authorization in the in the next part. All right. If you found these tutorials useful, please do like or subscribe. And thank you for watching.